On August 8, 2023, we lost the legend Johnny Hardwick. Now, I only knew Johnny for his work on King of the Hill, but with how much I've watched this show, it actually hurt quite a bit when I heard about his passing. I remember when I first started watching King of the Hill, my dad would have it on in the living room, and eventually we got the DVD box set from this place called Movie Stop. It's like GameStop, but with movies. And I'd watch the show pretty much every single day from like, I don't know, 99 to like 2010. And honestly, I still watch it to this day. It's, it's like my comfort show. With that being said, I really don't want this video to be a sad one. I kind of want to celebrate the life of Johnny Hardwick and talk about our favorite exterminator, Dale Gribble. So in my last video, I asked you guys, which Dale-focused episode do you want to see me talk about next? And to my surprise, I got a ton of responses. And after searching through all of them, I found one that I think is the perfect episode. The comment was from user Rogue Stand, and they said, For a Dale episode, you should do the one where the female exterminator tries to sleep with Dale. It shows his character well. And after watching that episode back, I gotta say I agree. So, without any further ado, this is the Season 7 episode, Night and Deity. The episode begins at the Hills House, where Peggy is throwing her first annual Great American Backyard Bird Count. So basically everyone is just standing around while Peggy is aggressively yelling at them. Well write it down people, write it down! John Redcorn joins them as the expert bird identifier and as he's talking, Min says this to Nancy. Why you stop fooling around with that John Redcorn? He is so smoking, smoking hot. Hey, Dale's hot too, in his own way. Fast forward and we see Bill bringing out a whole bunch of food to feed all the birds in the neighborhood. Eventually, we see hundreds of birds start to show up and take over the neighborhood, and they all start to turn on Bill. Later in the day, while the guys are in the alley, Dale vows to take care of the bird problem. He comes up with an idea that he calls the Ultrasonic Bird Distress Emitter. It's like a very, very, very loud machine that just plays the most horrible eye-gouging noise. I was up all night listening to sounds that'll drive you crazy. <laughs> How long does this have to go on for? Forever! After a few more failed attempts, Dale decides the task is too much for him, and he decides to bring in the top pigeon exterminator of Heimlich County. Hank tells Dale to do it, and Dale makes sure to tell Hank that the pest world isn't like the propane world. You don't just call the best exterminator of Heimlich County. Reputations are on the line, and promises need to be exchanged. Pest control world isn't your fuzzy colored propane candy land where you can just call people. Later that night, Luann is talking about how she's going to get wasted for her 21st birthday in three days. And then Peggy volunteers to be her designated driver. I can be there to gently remind you that as the daughter of an alcoholic, you have a genetic gun pointed at your head, and with every drink, you are adding another bullet to the chamber. Mm -hmm. And after that scene, she runs over to Hank to ask him if he'll be the driver. Hank obviously doesn't want to do it and says no, but then she talks him into it. In the middle of the night, Dale comes and knocks on Hank's window and tells him that he's got a meeting with the Pigeon God's assistant. The guys then drive to this alley in the middle of the night and Dale does, well, Dale does this. Impressive, Dale. Very impressive. The next morning, a truck pulls up to the alley and it's the pest god herself, Sheila. And while she's talking, Dale is just like standing there with his mouth wide open, frozen. Dale Gribble, <clears throat> Dale's dead bug. Did I say Dale's bug dead? Idiot. Dale Gribble, dead, dead, dead. While Sheila is applying the chemicals to the roof to get rid of the pigeons, the guys are just kind of staring at her and drooling. Man, that dang old Sheila looking all pretty like that, man. I'm back in my bedroom and talking about an old pigeon, man. Dale, honey, would you mind grabbing a caulking gun and helping me out? Dale tries to help, but he feels he doesn't deserve to apply chemicals next to an exterminator of her magnitude. She grabs his hands and then clearly tries to shoot her shot, if you know what I'm saying. Just pretend like you're holding a pretty girl's hand. Pigeons hate anything sticky on their feet. When the gel gets on their foot, they fly away because they can't handle the sensation. Blah. Pretty dang flirty there, Sheila. I'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt at this point and say that she just doesn't know he's married. Nancy can see what's going on from across the street, and she starts to feel a little nervous. She says, wouldn't it be poetic justice? She comes back to Dale, and he runs off with another woman. Yes, yes it would. And honestly, I kind of wish he did. Nancy walks over, and Dale is just oblivious at this point. He immediately tells Nancy that her can and Sheila's can bear striking similarities. And rightfully, Nancy says that she doesn't like him talking about other women's areas. How can I help it? She's got your hot bod and my hot mind. It's like some science experiment that's gone horribly right. 
And then Sheila asks Dale to grab a bird repair gel, and Dale asks Nancy to grab it for some reason, and then proceeds to make fun of Nancy for not knowing what the gel is. <laughs> you have no idea what that is. <laughs> okay, so far Dale is being a, a bit of a jerk. Well, actually, he's being a pretty big jerk. The next day, we see that Nancy is watching all the guys on what seems to be a secret camera in the alley. Of course, Dale would have a secret camera in the alley. She hears Sheila ask Dale to tag along for an overnight extermination job. And Sheila is one of, like, Dale's heroes, so of course he's gonna say yes. Later, Nancy is talking to Peggy about how this is very similar to when she would cheat on him with John Redcorn. You need to tell Dale just to back off. Use this if you have to. Oh, how can I say anything to him? I was unchristian to Dale for a long time. I just want my Shug back, Shug. Peggy tells Nancy that she should try to be a part of Dale's world, and the camera fades to black. Oh, and then we get this scene of Luann. Yep. Mm-hmm. Happy birthday, Luann. I love that she did the, yep, mm-hmm, classic. Back at Dale and Nancy's house, Dale is on the phone with Sheila. Nancy has Dale hang up the phone and tells Dale that she wants to tag along on one of his routes. Nancy, shoot it! This is what you do! And I, I, if this is what Dale does, I've found a whole new level of respect for this guy. Honestly, this is probably my favorite scene from like the entire episode. I don't know why, but like every time I see it, I just laugh. Anyway, uh, Nancy has the idea of gifting Sheila a gift certificate to go get a massage. And can you guys guess where it's for? Yes, of course, John Redcorn's New Age Healing Center. She tells Sheila to go ask for the migraine special. I'm sure 99% of you know this, but when uh, Nancy was cheating on Dale with John Redcorn, she would say she had migraines, and then she would go to John Redcorn for a... Uh, for a massage. I'm really more Dale's friend. It's weird. Dale and I have only known each other a few days, but we have this um, almost primal connection, you know, like bugs do. Sheila does not stop talking about Dale this entire time, and I feel a little bit mixed over this. On one hand, if anyone deserves to be cheated on, it's Nancy. And on the other hand, no one deserves to be cheated on. So it's, uh, I'm conflicted. And we switch over to Hank, and he's just trying to figure out an outfit to wear to Luann's birthday party. Back to John Redcorn, he calls Nancy to explain that he believes Sheila is interested in Dale. Man, this is an awkward call. Yes. And now we're at Shellackers? I probably butchered that. Hank is chaperoning Luann and her friends for her 21st birthday party. He's kind of just awkwardly sitting there while Luann and her friends are talking about all the guys at the bar. And you can tell by how hard he's laughing at that lady's joke that he's got a great sense of humor. He's got a great sense of ass in those jeans. Hey, hey, hey. One guy walks over to Luann and shoots his shot. Hank finds the guy flirting hilarious and goes over to buy another drink. And for some reason, right before he can order, the employees hold him down and start pouring alcohol down his throat. Like, why, why would you do that? I do not understand why you would... Oh, wait, I see. He went to the poppers line? Okay, I have never heard of poppers, so I'm not sure if this is a real thing. Hopefully not, but if it is, what a terrible idea. Hey, come over to this line if you want to forcefully be given alcohol. Like, <laughs> what? Back at the alley, Bill and Boomhauer find a pigeon who was apparently tripping off these chemicals that Sheila was laying around. Then we see Sheila pull up to Dale's house to pick him up for the overnight trip, and Nancy tries to demand Dale to stay at home. And then Dale has the absolute best comeback. I never told you to tell your friend John Redcorn to go home. Alright, now we're back at Boomhauer's house, and I'm not really sure what is going on here. They're trying to heal the pigeon? Uh, spiritually, maybe? I'm not sure. But this is the, uh, this is the clearest I think I've ever heard Boomhauer speak. No, man, you, you know, you, you, poop, you did poop on my car, you know, but don't, don't talk about that later, you know, don't worry about it right now, you know. At Luann's party, we see all that booze really got to Hank, and he's, he's out of it. And so is Luann, so not sure who's gonna be driving home. On the bright side, Hank is really enjoying himself, though. Uh, well, until he passes out on the table. Oh. Alright, now back to Dale's story. We see them exterminating together, and then Sheila tells Dale that they should go take a break. She opens up this door, and there's a little picnic set up. Dale gives her a smile, and then it cuts back to Hank sobering up in the back seat of the guy's car from earlier, and Luann and him start to make out. This is literally Hank's nightmare. Mom! Back at Boomhauer's house, I still don't know what the f*** is going on. Now we see Sheila and Dale drinking wine together, and she keeps talking about how pigeons mate, and it, clearly she's dropping some hints. 
She finishes up talking by telling Dale that she has a room downstairs. And finally, finally, Dale gets it. Sheila, I'm married. It's just us tonight. Oh no, Missy, there are three people here tonight. You, me, and my wife. My wife is the greatest woman there ever was. I think you should go. It does not get more loyal than Dale Gribble. This man has this woman who he clearly does find attractive, and she's like the god of pest exterminating, so it doesn't get much cooler for, for Dale than that. And he is still, still flabbergasted by the fact that she would hit on him like that. Yeah, I said flabbergasted. What are you going to do about it? All right, back to the episode. Dale tells Sheila that she should go, and she walks away. And I got to mention this little scene here. He hears a pigeon, and he goes, You heard me. I love my wife. You heard me. I love my wife. I, you gotta love Dale. When Dale gets home and walks in the door, we see Nancy spark up a little bit. Hey, did you know Sheila was trying to come on to me? No. Really? Yeah, she was all over me. It was weird. She knows I'm married. Oh, wingo, I didn't miss my show. Dale just breezes right by the fact that Sheila tried to come on to him. Now, you gotta think it's because he knew that he would absolutely never cheat on Nancy, so telling her about it wasn't any big deal to him. And I truly believe that throughout this entire episode, none of those cheating thoughts ever even went in his brain. The last scene of the episode, Bill goes out to let the pigeon go, and in the background we see Hank just pass out in the yard right before the sprinklers come on. Bill says, that was one hell of a night, and the credits roll. I gotta be real, I really really like this episode. And as much as it made me like Dale, it made me hate Nancy so much more. I've always said Nancy and Buck Strickland are the worst people on this show. Not because I don't like their characters per se, but because they're like, they're literal demons. If you're wondering why I don't like Buck Strickland, I have a whole video about it. I'll post a link in the description. That man is, that man is the worst. But Nancy, she does not deserve Dale. I'm gonna go ahead and save all the rest of my thoughts on Nancy for another video. Maybe like a worst character on King of the Hill part two or something. But yeah, I think this episode really showcased Dale's character like very well. And regardless of how insane and paranoid he can get, at the end of the day, He's got a heart of gold. That's gonna do it for me, and I'd like to finish the video with this. Rest in peace, Johnny Hardwick. Your work will live in our hearts forever. Thank you.